There's Danny Flexen here for seconds out. Delighted to be joined by the gorilla, John Ryder, uh, WBO interim super middleweight champion, hoping to upgrade that to full champion. About five weeks, just over five weeks away against Canelo Alvarez out in Mexico. John, how are you feeling? Mate, feeling good. Um, oh, yeah, looking to upgrade it, mate. Looking to come king of the world. <laughs> well, like Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio. Oh, King Charles gets coronated that weekend, didn't he? The coronated oh. coronation, yeah. So, wait, let's have a let's have a double. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he's wanting you to win as well. I'm sure it he means much be, to he him. He could be too. king of England. I could be king of the world. Yeah, why not? And then he'll yeah. have to answer to you. Um, when we talked before, we were talking about possible locations for the fight with Canelo, and you said you really wanted it in Mexico. Were you just saying that because you knew that it was likely to be there or, or did you really want it over there? No, man. I just thought, like, if you're if you're going to fight a champion, then you've got to expect to fight a champion in his backyard. Do you know what I mean? I know, obviously, he's fought most of his fights in the US, um, Vegas and whatnot. But, listen, I, I knew there was potential of him talking about a homecoming. And um, I think... What I said uh, probably rang, rang true in his ears and he, he thought that the Mexican people deserved it. And can you take anything from your experience of the, the media week out in the US, San Diego and so on? Did you see anything from him? Did you get any sort of impression of him? Uh, it wasn't as friendly this time as he was the last time I met him. Um, there was no pleasantries exchanged, no handshakes, no nothing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's go time. So um, we're, we're there to do a job and we're, we're of the same mentality of the... Listen, you can shake hands before and after a fight, but now it's um it's time to fight. If you were going out to Vegas to fight and people would be concerned about the officials and the judging and so on, you're actually going to his backyard even more so in Guadalajara. Do you let that enter your mind at all? The the, the officials and you know any tricks the the team might try and play on you while you're over there, the ring and all that sort of stuff. Well, mate, I had the uh, the three AM fire alarm on my last show in yeah. Frank Warren show. So, uh, listen, it could, might be a few more fire alarms, but that's it. But um, no, listen, it's in doing the you a favour. Yeah. you preparing you. That's it. Um, neutral judges, neutral referee. So that's that's all in the contract. So I'm sure they'll stick to their word. And um, listen, I think you see with a bibble fight that that judging the fights are fairly scored now. So we don't have to worry too much about that. I don't think, but. Um, I feel like this fight is too big to have any scandal surrounding it regarding scoring and judging and, and the refing even. And a huge fight in a football stadium out in Mexico, although that can be daunting for some people, you're very experienced. Are you quite excited about it? Yeah, I mean, um, I've done a, what is it, whole rugby stadium once um, in a, on a wet, wet weekend in July, funny enough. You got it done on a wet weekend in Hull. Well done. Yeah, wet weekend in Hull. You know, and it was July as well. Um, but yeah, now nah, Mexico, Cinco de Mayo weekend in a 50,000-seater stadium. So I'm sure it'll be rocking. Um, big weekend for, for Mexico that weekend. Obviously, I think it's a 200 years celebration. So, mate, yeah, going to be going to be huge. And... We know about Canelo. Everyone's seen his body of work. It's available on YouTube for people who didn't see it live, all the fights he's had. What can you see in him in terms of like chinks in the armour or things you can do differently from previous opponents who haven't been able to, to defeat him? I think you've got to mix it up a bit. I think we've seen people try and box him at range and he, he's very good at closing down the space and stepping in. Um, people trying to mix it with him up close but not committing and getting resulting back to what they know and trying to box at range and then people just being overawed and, and running from them as such. Um I think I think a few of us us Brits the Brits before that have come before me have had have had good success. Billy Joe was boxing him well and, and using his movement and from side to side and then probably ahead in the fight up until the stoppage. Um and obviously the, the eye socket was a, a big injury. Um but yeah, he had a lot of success, so you can you can take a bit from that. But the, the, I think there's ways. Obviously, Bivol showed how to do it to perfection. But obviously, I'm not I'm not Bivol. Um, I'm not six foot odd and <laughs> in and out boxer. Do you know what I mean? I'm a, I'm I am taller for once though, so that makes a, a change. Yeah, well, maybe that's a good omen. 
yeah, you never know. Um, how challenging has it been so far to get adequate sparring for Canelo? You know, he hasn't got kind of a, a completely unique style, but he, the level he fights at as well, it can't be easy. No, of course. But we, yeah, we've got a few, we've got some coming in next week and making do this week and, and, and getting by. But I'll say making do. I mean, I'm in with good fighters. Um, and some will be a bit sharper, some will be a bit slower, but they've all, they're all mixing it up, which is good. Different varieties. When are you planning to get out there, either to Mexico directly or to the US to complete your camp in Mexico? Uh, going to head out to Vegas on April 20th mm -hmm. um, and then get a finish off camp there, um, adjust over the weekend, then then hit the weekend, let's say the 24th, the week of the 24th, the final week of, of preparation, last final spars and whatnot. Then the week of the fight, head down to Guadalajara and um, embrace the chaos. How important do you think experience is for you in this fight? Because a lot of people go in against Canelo. I'm thinking of like Caleb Plant, most famously recently, maybe being a bit overawed, a bit too respectful of him from the off. No, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, listen, it's, it's hard not to. I imagine he's, he's done everything in the sport. Um, he is a superstar, but I don't know. I think, um, listen, it was good to come face to face with him the other day and, just, just realise that he's he's human. Do you know what I mean? You can put him on this pedestal, but he is another man ahead, two arms, two legs. Uh, he's got to see if what it is. Okay. And there's been a lot of talk in the past couple of weeks, particularly yesterday when Eddie Hearn was at the launch event for Joshua's fight against Franklin, about the next move for Canelo after you. Is that, in some sense, is a blessing because it takes some of the pressure off you? Or does it piss you off that you're being overlooked in some quarters? Well, I feel like I'm always being overlooked. Um, I feel like I got overlooked for the the last fight against Zach Parker. Um, and look at that end that. But listen, I know they're obviously looking at what's next for Canelo, but what's next for Canelo is a rematch with me in September. So let's see how that goes, yeah? The main names being mentioned, aside from yourself with Canelo, are Bivol, who we've talked about already, the rematch, and David Benavidez, who got a good win over Caleb Plant at the weekend. Have you managed to see that? And if so, what did you make of his performance? I haven't seen it yet. No, I mean, I'll I see the result, obviously. I've not watched it yet. I will catch up on it in time. But, um, oh, lost you there. <laughs> Dropped you. Um, yeah, no, I'm sure. Listen, we know, we know Plant's a great fighter. We know Benavidez is a great fighter, but how long can he keep making that 168 for? He's absolutely huge, isn't he? So um, I'm sure he's, he'll say he'll tell you he's comfortable, but listen, I, I don't think it'll be too long before he's moving up to 175 and probably be even more of a full stop at that way. How much do you think about kind of future fights against the contenders coming up? Because you beat Canelo, all being well, at the beginning of May, and that's career best achievement out in Mexico, massive stadium full of fans. How do you then get motivated to carry on, even if you win the fight? Because then, then you're going to bring it back and earn the big bucks on your own doorstep or in Vegas. So, listen, it's, um, we're not motivated by money, but you, you, you got to look towards next. And listen, it's, it's in the it's in the contract for a rematch. So, uh, why would not look towards that? Surely, without prying too deeply into your personal finances, you must be earning pretty good money for this one, even though it's not in the UK. That would, but that would be telling, wouldn't it? Then, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, listen, um, it it could always be more, but I suppose it could always be a lot less. So, I'm, I'm content with what I'm getting. Um, you're not going to see me driving around the streets of Islet owning Lamborghinis and Ferraris. Um, but <laughs> I, I'm happy, yeah. So it's less about life changing money, but more potentially life changing opportunity should you win. For sure, yeah, life changing opportunity. Um, listen, we we know what we're up against. Um, me and Tony in the gym tirelessly working on game plans with Kevin. Um, I'm in the weights room with Dan. I was in the, just see Sam the chiropractor getting clicked and realigned and whatnot. So we're leaving nothing to chance. Even working on the mental side of things with Greg. Do you know what I mean? It's um, it's good. We're uh, we're leaving no stone unturned for this camp. You talk about the work with Dan Lawrence, S and C coach, of course. Is there anything you're changing S and C wise for Canelo specifically? 
Uh, no, I mean, we, we do a lot of stuff specific to, to boxing. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen a lot of the stuff that Dan gets us doing, but we're, we're keeping it like we normally do, but adding a few little extras, yeah. How motivated is everyone in the gym as a whole when one of you has a big fight like this? Because this is obviously the biggest fight of your life, but for the gym, most of the other guys in there, it's bigger than a fight they've had so far. Well, you know what? It's great. I'm actually in an Airbnb with Joe Caldino. We're sharing an Airbnb for the next three weeks. So it's great to be training beside him and, and living beside him. We've both got a common goal of world title fights. Obviously, he's in against Rakimov two weeks before me. So, yeah, we're, we're all buzzing. You know what I mean, Connor will be back soon, hopefully. And then White wins for George Liddard and Maisie the other day. Uh, the gym's buzzing. And, yeah, we just want to keep the success going. When does that start, the uh, co-tenancy with uh, Joe Caldina? Started uh, yeah, uh, Monday, yesterday. So, uh, yeah, he's... Um, oh, so he's you're a, there now? He's a good flatmate so far. Are you there now? Yeah, he's upstairs, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Is it? Have you done it before, leading up to other fights? I have, I have moved out, but um, this time I'm, I'm sharing with Joe Caldina. So, yeah, it's good. Big bro and little bro in, in the pen. <laughs> Brilliant. We'll have to catch up in a couple of weeks and just get a load of like the habits and stuff and how you coexisted. Mate, I, I I don't really see him here unless we're having dinner or leaving for the gym. He used to live with Tony, didn't he? Yeah, he, he used to live with Tony and, and Ricky Burns. Um, <laughs> so he's he's an old hand at this now, yeah. I think I remember Tony saying like when he lived with him, he never saw him. <laughs> like the same thing. He's a bit of a hermit, yeah. is Joe, apparently. Uh, he uh, keeps himself to himself. Maybe you just don't like you like Londoners. <laughs> Maybe that's all it is. I say you Londoners, yeah. I'm a Londoner as well. Us, us Southerners, you know what I mean? <laughs> Hate you all. John, really appreciate it, mate. Obviously, I hope you get the job done uh, on the 6th of May and um, I hope I'm the first interview when you do. Fingers crossed. I'm, I'm um, sure you will be. I'm sure you'll be straight on the blower, in the WhatsApps, on the emails, in the tweets, the the Instagram messages, so... Uh, TikTok? Yeah, mate. Pivot yeah. to TikTok yet? Nah, not, not, not done the pivot yet, but um, yeah, you never know. Me. When you do it, I'll do it. Mate, with more chip shop than TikTok. <laughs> I think that's probably true, yeah. <laughs> All right, mate, really appreciate it, and yeah, best right, of luck. Cheers, mate, take, take care. Mind.